Hello again and welcome back. Today we're going to do a kit build. This is a kit build I've been meaning to do for a while. This is just a simple clock. Should be pretty easy to do so I think we can get started right away. So as per the usual we should probably start with the lowest profile components. Now it's kind of hard to tell which are the lowest profile on this board but I don't know I'm guessing I don't know, a lot of it is the same height. So let's uh, let's start with the crystal. So we're going to put the crystal here. That's a 12 megahertz crystal. Let's see if I can flatten this down like this. I don't know if this will work, but it's worth a shot. So here I'm using my lead solder and my usual soldering station. I'm set to 350 degrees Celsius. That is a little bit on the hot side, but that's okay. I could just hurry up. It'll be just fine. There we go. Snip these guys off. Oop. Okay, crystal is done. First piece installed. Let's see, what's next? We could probably use... What's taller, the transistor or the... I think I think this guy could go next. So this is a socket. Uh, the only thing with the socket is you got to be careful. Right over here, there's a little notch. There's a little notch in the socket right here. you got to line those two up. That little notch basically just dictates where or how to orient the the chip inside. It's nice that this kit comes with a socket because they don't always. So that means I can take the chip out. Oh, not, not quick enough. Just trying to keep this flat as I'm soldering. Eh, it's not really flat. I'm going to have to re-flatten this. There we go. I think that's flat now. Attack this corner. Gonna attack this corner. I think in a future video I'm gonna try to analyze this circuit and see if I can build my own. Because it'd be nice to have a giant clock. And if I just have to copy this circuit, that's a good way to learn. As long as I understand how it works, mind you. That's a nice thing about building these kits. Not only do you get to just have fun and solder, but you also get to analyze pre-built circuits, which do work. You can analyze the sections of it individually. And further your understanding. Oh, I don't think I got that one. Don't know how many more kits I can do because uh, postal service is on strike right now in Canada, and uh, they're saying international parcels will be backed up until March. So I don't think I can order new parcels until after that. So we may have to put the kits on hold for a little bit. So that's done. Let's go now to this resistor. So this is actually a resistor. It's called a SIL resistor, single inline. And basically there's a little dot there. I believe the dot is the common. And then there is a resistor going to each of these pins. They're a nice way to keep things kind of tidy. And I can see here that right there is where the, there's a little line there. And I believe that's where the dot will go. If it doesn't work well, we can always just try to figure out why. So I'm going to take a little bit of this white blue tack, stick it on here, make sure it's not touching that socket, and we can solder these in. I'm not sure if I'm actually going in the right order from lowest profile to highest profile, but it, it doesn't really matter. It's more just to make it a little easier.
Okay, that's done. Still resistors. All right, so now we can go ahead and put in, I guess we'll put in these little capacitors. So there's a C3 and C2. I don't know if they're both the same. This one says 30 on it. I don't know if you can see that. This one here says 30, so, <laughs> so they're actually the same capacitance, but they are um, different sizes, so they must be rated for different voltages. I'll put the bigger one on the outside here. Oh, actually, it says here it should have a 10K resistor right here and right there, but I don't have 10K resistors. Well, I guess uh, I guess I'll have to go in, into my uh, my supply and use those. All right, so I'm going to put these capacitors in. I can bend the legs for these. One there, the bigger one on the outside. I'm going to check my kit bin too. It's possible they just fell out at some point. go. The uh, voltage for this kit is 3 to 6 volts. So this will be perfect for a USB powered clock. Although every time if you if you use your computer for example for USB Every time you shut off your computer, if you don't have one of those always-on USB connections, then uh, you'll have to reset the clock. Okay, uh, we're going to go with this electrolytic cap. And the electrolytic cap has the longer leg here. That's the positive, and the positive is marked on the, up, on the top here. Put this guy in. I wish this was a little lower profile, but... It is what it is. Maybe I'll put a little bit of tack to stand it up. Oh, am I in shot? Yes, I am. Okay, get that guy done. Cut the leads. Good. This is going fairly quickly. That's pretty nice. Okay, one transistor, two buttons. I could put the buttons in, but I think I'm going to check the. Um, made some stuff fall. That's okay. I'm going to check the the button how they work. So here you can see that the two buttons they go uh, here. Oh, I put some solder into there. That's not good. Anyways, they go here and here and you'll see the this section is connected this section is connected so let me just take the solder off of here yeah that's sort of exposed I could go get my solder actually my solder sucker is right here I'm gonna suck the solder out of here Maybe I should uh, actually put that down. There we go. Did I get it all? Yeah, close enough. Okay, so I want to just make sure that my buttons here, I know which ones are connected to each other. So I'll go into Ohm's range and then select the um, continuity buzzer. So when I touch these two together, don't know if you hear that. So if I touch these two, nothing. If I touch these two, they make noise. So clearly, these two here, if I hold on to this and press this button, now they have continuity. So these two will have to go 
across this gap here. So they go this way. So there's one. And same thing, there's the other. I think they would have only fit one way, but you know, you probably could have made it fit creatively the wrong way. Not saying I'm going to be successful at building this kit, but I'm trying to give it the most chances of being successful without having to troubleshoot stuff. Okay, let's solder these switches. There we go, switch is soldered. Okay, so we have a capacitor missing, C4. Damn, this kit is missing a few parts. So the two 10K resistors, a, um, a C4, I think that's uh, oh, 104, I think that's 10 nanofarads or 10 microfarad. We have a transistor, Q1. This transistor is S8550. We're going to put this in, but then I'm going to have to go get some spare parts. Okay, in goes the transistor. I know you're not supposed to stress the legs of the leads, but at the same time, I've never really had any issues. I think these parts are a bit more resilient than we give them credit for and when you're doing things that aren't mission critical like just building kits at home I don't think you need to put as much care as people say you do for sure if you're going to care you, know, you should put some effort but I don't think it's as critical as people say next is this um, buzzer so again, the long leg is positive, so that goes up here. So put that in there. I feel like this guy will need a bit more heat. Nope, solders pretty easily. There we go. Okay. I'm going to leave the um, sticker on top here because usually they're way too loud. Okay, last thing, this little connector, and then I have to go look for the spare parts to make this work. So this little connector, I'm going to try to stuff some tack in there, solder these guys. There we go. All right. So this, oh yeah, one more part actually. We need the display. Let's put the display in there. I wonder if I should, oh, I just touch the hot solder. I wonder if I should uh, test this out before adding those components or not. Probably not, because I, knowing my luck, I'd probably fry the thing. Okay, so tack this. Is that tacked? I can't see. Yeah, that's tacked. Am I in shot? Oh, nope, just out of shot. This, uh, this solder, a 0.8, it does feed 0.8 millimeters. It does feed a bit too much solder in. But I like the um, amount of flux 
included in, in this solder as compared to my thinner stuff, this different brand here, which is, uh, seems to be, give me drier joints. Okay, so there we go. I think we got that all done. Just gonna trim this up. That last one went flying. Okay, make sure all the legs are off. That's good, I don't see any solder bridges. This guy could have been trimmed a bit more. Okay, so now we need uh, two 10K resistors, a 10 microfarad cap, and I think we'll be good. So we have the chip to put in after, and then we will put these, I guess we could put these little caps on these buttons right now just to make it a little prettier. One and two. There we go. So that all works. So let me get those last components. We'll stick them in, solder them down, and see if it all works. So for the 104 capacitor, I should order some more. I'm running kind of low. So it's this guy here. It's not, uh, it's not tiny. But it's not too big either, I just need one. So there we go, let's see, 104. I think it's 10 micro, 10 nanofarad, something like that. For my resistors, got 10K. Should be some loose ones in here, I prototype with these a lot. Oh, probably not, okay, so one, two. Pull these out. Now it looks like the slot here, the hole in the kit, is for a third watt resistor, but I only have these um, quarter watts, or sorry, um, eighth watt resistor. I only have these quarter watts. So, I mean, they're just gonna have to do. They'll be a little too big. Maybe I'll have to align them differently, but in the end, they'll work. It's always okay to go over rating. Don't go under, though. It's just that when you go over rating, typically there's no room for the components, not enough room for the components. Typically more wattage on the resistor means a bigger resistor. Let's see here, pull this guy through. Lots of room for these resistors, so maybe it was quarter watt. And then our 104. And there it goes. All right, solder these guys down. There we go. Cut these off. And there we go. Do the ceremonial chip installing. Now, this chip is not sitting in a anti-static foam, it's just a regular foam. Hopefully it'll still work. If it really doesn't work, well, we'll have to deal with it. We'll have to figure out what's wrong with it. It's not going to be that simple. But obviously you do the uh, idiot check first. You make sure that you yourself haven't been an idiot. You're going to check, or we're going to check our soldering because we know that's possible gonna check the board for any damage we're gonna check some components some of them are easy to check in circuit some of them are not I'm just bending the pins here on the IC to try to get it to go into that socket these sockets are very cheap 
so sometimes it's hard to align. I think I got that side in. There we go. It's all the way in, and you, you notice that I've actually lined up this little notch. That's the pin one notch. Okay, I have to figure out a way to power this now, which I haven't actually thought of before. But I think I got just the right thing. I'll be right back. And like I said before, powering this by USB would be a fantastic way to do it. And so that is what we are going to do. So I just need to, these are just wires I got in the uh, mailbag at some point. It's a USB with no connection on the other side. It's perfect. I'm gonna try to strip this off. I could use proper strippers, but what's the fun in that? And I have already checked. This is positive and negative. Now the only thing is that they haven't really told us which side is positive, which side is negative on here. So we're going to have to try to figure that out ourselves. I can kind of see that's the so this this one here this point right here that's the negative side of the buzzer positive on top negative on the bottom and if you look even the switches are connected to this rail here and that's that's our uh, power connector so I would say positive is outside negative is inside and I believe I also forgot to grab a screwdriver I have this mangled up screwdriver here that I can use. Loosen this. Loosen this. And just making sure negative on the inside. I wouldn't plug this into a computer just yet. I think I will try it with just a um, power brick, like a USB wall charger. Just in case this thing is not done properly, I don't want to damage the uh, USB controller in my computer. And I have this Apple brick. Plug these two together. And check for smoke. This, these cables are very stiff. I don't know if I'll be able to. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's modulating a little bit. No smoke. Any heat? Nope. No heat. I'm going to have to hold this. Actually, I'm going to probably tack that down. There we go. Okay, so that's not too bad. 1259. What happens if I press the... Oh. I, I, don't, I don't really know what's going on here. That makes the buzzer go. Okay, it's uh, 13 o'clock according to this. Nine. Oh, that's like a stopwatch. That's. Oh, A. 13. 14. Oh, jeez. 
I don't really know how to control this thing. A, F. I don't, I don't. What the heck is going on? C sort of on. C sort of off. Okay. This weird thing is beeping at me. <laughs> this is uh, interesting to say the least. How do I set the time though? Is it like that? A. 15. B, C. Oh, there we go. D. That's an E. F. G. Back to the time. Okay, so let's see. Press and hold this one. A. B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, so I think I'm not I'm not sure if I understand this, but I think I can go I can change that. Can I go back to No. Okay. I think I'm going to go look this up. I'll I'll be right back. Okay, I think I've worked this out on my own, which is great because um, after looking for some instructions, I decided it was more fruitful to just play with it. Okay, so I believe what's happening is that there's an alarm at one o'clock and that's what just happened there. But here we go. So I'll go uh, press and hold this until we get A. Then we can adjust A. A seems to be the hour. And since right now it is 12 o'clock, noon, 12, and then I'll go to B. B seems to be the minutes. It's 12, 16 or so. So 12, 16. And then this is alarms. So I'm going to turn that off. Turn that off. Turn that off. Text going on. A, B, C, D, E. Oh, there's no E. Well, it seems, there we go. But anyways, it's 1216 now, and I believe it will keep that time as long as I just don't remove the power. So you could battery power this. You could use uh, two double A's because it does run uh, three to six volts. Uh, but it does seem to work. The display is not actually particularly bright. With my, uh, with my lighting here, I actually can't see it very well until I shade it. And you guys have trouble seeing it even if I do shade it. But other than that, it was a pretty neat kit to build. And I can't wait to actually analyze this circuit and I don't know I feel like building a really big one with custom uh, segments on the seven on the seven segment displays and maybe I'll just tap off the little uh, solder points on the back of this display to run my own big one but until then kit is finished thanks for watching